Well, thank you very much, Sharad, for the warm welcome. And it's indeed a, a great privilege to be here at the NASCOM Leadership Conference to present. You know, when you say the words glowing, going global to micro-enterprises or small and medium enterprises, there's a level of trepidation. And I'm going to try and take some of that away because globalisation is a new term for a very old process that began when our human ancestors, with aspirations for improvement and better opportunities, moved out of Africa to the four corners of the globe. We know that with any venture, with any journey like that, there is always an element of risk. And we're only just beginning, I think, to understand how to reap the benefits and manage the risks associated with such journeys. To give you some context, you know, as well as my, uh, I guess, my multinational credentials, in 2002, my husband and I ran a micro-management uh, consulting company. Um, we had built some very strong expertise in e-government and citizen service delivery. And because of that expertise, we were asked to bid for some work in Kuwait. Now, two people could not deliver the extent of the, of the requirements in Kuwait. So we had to put together a number of partnerships both onshore in Australia and also offshore in Kuwait in order to successfully bid for the large piece of work that was being tendered. We were successful in uh, putting together the strategy work for, for the Kuwait government. We went on to explore opportunities in Iran and in Saudi Arabia, and last year bid for work in Bahrain. Now, we were runners-up to Pricewaterhouse, so I didn't feel quite so bad about that. But that's, I guess, to, to give you a sense that I understand some of the issues in partnerships, how you put them together, how you... Um, earn the trust, because in that situation we had to earn the trust and reliability, both onshore and offshore, while we were going through the tendering process. The goal of world-class and sustainable competitive advantage for all companies, small, medium and large, can no longer be achieved in isolation, and that example was to show that. The increased scope, size and complexity of projects means that organisations must build stronger partnerships to help ensure the success of their undertakings, more importantly, perhaps to mitigate risk and to ensure an acceptable return on investments. Many people that I talk to in Australia think BPO, outsourcing and offshoring partnerships are driven entirely by economic reasons, that organisations seek only to find the lowest cost provider. However, I believe that there are now other drivers for developing long-term relationships between Australian and Indian businesses. Australia has an ageing population and a very low fertility rate. Right now, there are four and a half times fewer 17 to 25-year-olds coming into the workforce than did 30 years ago. How does that translate in the ICT industry in Australia? Well, for every vacancy in the ICT industry, on average across Australia, there are 2.4 acceptable applications. Now, that's a labour pool that you simply can't live within the constraints of. India, on the other hand, of course, is a very young country. Half the population is under the age of 25. And part of what I'm doing in my role as CEO of AIIA is to present that and to look at the opportunities that that rich labour pool provides for Australian organisations and the opportunities to partner. 